Well, so uh, yes, you, we've been talking about it. You look at the uh, two-year yield surging. When you see a big move up in the two-year yield like we've seen, you typically see stocks fall pretty hard. And uh, we basically treaded water this week. So I think that's an important takeaway from the market here, that things that there is underlying demand for equities. Yesterday, we saw that late day sell off and everyone said, there it goes, you know, the whole, you know, intraday strength trade is over. But what happened today? We saw the market close uh, near the highs of the day. So I think that you still have investors coming in uh, to buy weakness. And I think the worries that you see is just keeping investors honest. Uh, you have, a, you know, you can't have a bull market if everyone starts becoming complacent. So I, I, I like to see the fact that people are worried and and nervous along the way. Yeah, and presumably, you know, and I know you're, you're not uh, kind of foreclosing on the chance we get uh, a more decent pullback. Let's say if it's 5 percent, presumably people would get even more worried in that instance. Um, uh, and I, I know you look at the sort to get of more uh, worried than people are now. Yeah, exactly. Well, maybe so. Uh, you know, I know you look at other market periods that are analogous to right now. And there's just been a storm of statistics that essentially all build to this conclusion that markets that have acted the way this one has either this year or since October tend not to just be kind of complete head fake rallies. Obviously, we can't take that to the bank. But I'm wondering what you're seeing in terms of what this period that we're going through right now uh, reminds you of. Yeah. So, I mean, you look at, I mean, what I look back at is to a much smaller degree. But when you look at the 08 and 09 period, what you saw is in uh, the fall of 08, you saw the market make an internal low. And then in the spring of 09, we made a lower low, but the internals didn't confirm that. What you saw last year, you saw the market make an internal low. You saw more new highs, of new lows at an extremely high number in the summer. And then in October, the market made a marginal new low, but we didn't see that expansion in the new lows. So that told you that the internals were stronger than the overall market. And when you come back to even the shorter term, just look at this year, you've seen that you look at the intraday pattern of this year, the first five weeks, and compare it to every other year going back to the mid 80s, the six years that you see the most common pattern where you see opening lower and then rallying throughout the day, you had it in 1987, 1989, 1995, 2012, 2013, and 2019. The first year, 1987, that's a very scary um, year to be associated with. But five of those six years, the market was up about 18% on a median basis for the rest of the year. And even in 87, we went up about 20% before the market pulled back in August. Exactly. So, I think in that respect, you got to think about that, uh, this buying on weakness in the mornings and throughout the day has historically been a positive uh, pattern to latch on to. For sure. I wanted to also get you on small caps as still potentially having a little bit uh, of performance potential against uh, the broader market. What, what do you think uh, makes them uh, worth the fresh look? Well, so for everyone worried about the market's valuation in the large cap space, you do have relatively high valuations. Within the small cap space, the S&P 600, which is the 600 small caps and uh, small cap stocks, it's trading for about 13 times earnings, which is much cheaper than the S&P 500. And if you look in some individual sectors like consumer discretionary, the S&P 500 consumer discretionary trades for about 30 times earnings. The small cap consumer discretionary trades for about nine times earnings. So there's there's a big valuation discrepancy between those sectors. So I think if you want to look for opportunities, especially as an individual investor, where you're not going to have as much of an impact on the movement of a stock, uh, that's a great place to be looking.